Practice it and then we'll say it. Great. That's my thing. Okay, I did the first petition thing. What page was the address on? Wait, I thought we were doing the second article. That's the next thing. If you know it, great. Wait, that's next week? That'd be the next one, yes. Oh. <laughs> Wait, can I do the address instead of the. Um, that that's what's what that was due already you? yes last week so please if you have the address let's do it and catch you up on it and get it done okay so okay so I don't I'm sorry here hold on I'm Claire I'll look Koi give me two seconds so I can look up what page it's on for for uh, Claire over there the address is on page two forty three two forty three all right all right our Father in heaven what does this mean. Through these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and that we are his true children, so that so that we will pray to him as boldly, as boldly and confidently as children ask their dear father. That's it. Well done. Bingo. All right. Hold on. I might be able to do this on the fly. So I know that. Here. Put it, go, show him. Put it in here right now. And you can't really see that. The address by memory. Cole, Gracie's got it done. And here's fine boys. We're going to give you full score because you did great. And we're going to mark it as complete. Done. There it is. Okay, well, so there's this. Little That's little. it. I might the be address. able to do it on the fly. Well, I've got a second article. I'll probably do this. There he is. Hi, Mr. Grady. You okay, bud? Mm -hmm. All right. Here, I'm going to take away everybody's grades now so you don't look at each other's grades. You're great. You picked three Oreos. You're welcome. Thing. Mm, yes. Very helpful. Not the quiz. I did the quiz, but not um the hmm. It's like how will you be in class today? Do you expect us like? You, you don't have to do anything with that. I'll, I'll just keep track of that. I just wanted. I needed to have some way to re remember who was here and who wasn't here. Okay, just class. Like, turn them in stuff. I was like confused. So like for last week for attendance, right? I went through it and just gave everybody who was here credit for being here. It's weird because half of you have your parents listed here and half of you have yourself listed here. And I I'm... want to send my parents to you. <laughs> well, I emailed it to you to your email. So you can, no, not you. You, I emailed yeah. it to you, but you never I joined. You my, yeah, I'm just going to do it on my dad's because it works better that way. I don't know. I don't care which whose you use. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. It's no no skin off my nose. Actually, it might not let you email it to me because it'd be considered an outside. It's an outside source. email. Yeah. Has um, what's her name? Wiederman. What's the what's Wiederman's? What's her uh, name? Ava. Ava. Has she come to any class yet this year? She's came to one. She's off to one one Sunday school. She came to one Sunday school. Did she come to any catechism oh, yeah, classes? Well, last year, right? Last, last or last week. Last week. Last week. Yeah, she was. Oh, yeah, she was here last week. Yeah. Yeah. The, who was not here last week? Gracie. She was, she, Gracie she was wasn't here. That's right. Did she do it on her own? Mm -hmm. She says she turned it in. She must have done it on her own. I'm guessing she did on her But last week, Ava was here. You know, it's super confusing okay. to try to keep track of two catechism classes that are both different. How many kids yeah. do you have in yours? I have nine up there. Jeez. Oh, and, Kenzie. Kenzie's not here. Oh, she might be at her mom's this week. And not only nine do I have nine up there, but I have, so I have what I call them cohorts. I have like three different groups. Like they don't, they're not all in, together in the same place. Um, 
So I'm actually teaching like five, four or five different catechism lessons every week. It's so Same lessons? no, like you guys are different than them actually? and up there, they're different than like they have different different. books. Or? Yeah. We don't use the green book. So I've got it all. You use blue book? We just use this book. So do you guys do questions? Yeah, we do these questions out of here. Did you do that? So we do we do these questions in here. Unless you already did that last week. The first petition we just oh, but I might be, Anyway. I, I might be able to do this. Hold on, yeah, so let me lesson. How do you grade like memory work? For memory work? Yeah. Good. It means you got ninety five percent of it, you know, or better. You got pretty much everything. Maybe you need a little help. You know, Partial. I can do a little report cards. Sorry. He probably totally forgot. Partial just means, you know, you got some of it, but it definitely needed some work. Or redo, it's not good enough that you can count it. Okay. You need to try over. I can do my How's that sound? Player. Is that like reasonable? Yeah. yeah. Good partial redo. I, I try to keep it easy. I don't want to overthink this. What if I get partial redoing? So. <laughs> yeah. That's up to you. If you get a partial, you no, know, some like people... last year I would miss like two words and I would redo the whole thing. Some people want to redo it if they get, you know, okay. partials. I think I can do this. It's pretty interesting. Okay, our Father in Heaven. What does this mean? We, oh shoot, what's the first word? I don't remember. Something about, it starts, I don't remember how it starts. Oh my goodness. With Hold these on. words. With these words, God asks that we believe, or that we, oh goodness, that we pray to him. Wait, no, that we believe that he is the true father as we are his true children. And that we pray to him as boldly and confidently. As your children would ask their dear father. Good. We're happy to give you. you happy to give you credit for that. Oh, with these words, God tenderly invites us. Oh, that makes me mad. Makes you so, so mad. Is that like a, a man? Or no, yeah. That's good. It's good. We're moving on in life. There's more things to to worry about than to squabble about one little word. Yeah, see, it was kind of weird. We started out in, like, our blue books, and then we switched to, like, the end of the blue books, and then now we're in the green book. Actually, no, we started green book six first. So, uh, Claire. Yeah, I don't, this is just what Pastor Warnicke said you guys did, so I was like, fine, we'll do that. It would be easier for me if we dropped it, but. Please. Okay, I'm going to. I vote mind. drop it, maybe? You vote drop it. I vote what would we do instead, then? We do this book. Talk. No, we do this book. We definitely wouldn't sit here and talk. I mean, we would still sit here and talk. Could really we talk either way? Uh, it's it's slightly more complicated. Yes. Um, I would rather do that. It's okay. less. I'd rather do that. Memory. It's less about the biblical stories and more about Not the definitely. concepts involved. Okay, I feel like this makes me feel about like think about Sunday school, like Bible lessons. It's supposed to be like advanced Bible lessons, but I'm not sure if we always get to the advanced part. I think I'm ready to try mine. You're ready to try yours? All right. The address. Our Father. Wait. I'm sorry. I'm going to. I'm just restarting. Okay. The first word our Father, our Father who art in heaven. No, I might be back. <laughs> okay. okay. The address, our Father in heaven. What does this mean? <laughs> God tenderly invites us to be to believe that He is our true Father and that we are His true children, and <laughs> that we can believe. Boldly and confidently in him as child, as a dear child believes, or we can ask him, a dear child asks his dear father. Yeah, I'm going to have to redo that. Yeah, I just don't. It's okay. Really, You'll be able to get it. Probably the second hour clock can do that right now, but. Well, do you want to do that and just get it done with? No. <laughs> okay. I'm going to how about you, Grady? Are you almost done? 
this thing? I already did the memory work. I just no, I know you already did good. I didn't do I didn't good I didn't do good on the first petition. I thought I was supposed to say it to my friends. You, you can say it to Barrett, or you can say it right here. Whatever you prefer. Okay. It's in Monday, so I don't remember it now. That's fine. <coughs> you should remember it though now. My brain isn't clicking. I said it at like twelve because that's when your brain's active. Twelve p.m. Whoa, you're yeah. crazy. Mentally. How do you stay up all night like that, man? School. Oh, is there something else going on? Is there something called cat? Yeah, yeah my there's... dad's like doing the you're sound getting thing. They're doing some sound stuff over there. Anyway, all right, back to. Did you get it? Yeah, I read it. Cool. First of all, it's the door. Last of all, it's slowly closing. Very slowly. So slowly. We're having a party at my house right now. And you're missing it. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, so Grady, you've got no memory work to recite or anything? It's the fire sales. Gotcha. Good. I said it to my okay. friends. Wow. This, the first 15 minutes of this video of class are just us sitting here figuring out memory work. That's the best. That's the best. Yeah. Why don't you do an ASMR? Just go right up to the camera. That's the best snap. I love carrots. Do you have Mr. Clayball? I don't. I have Mr. Oh, dude, he rubs the microphone through his beard. Actually? Yeah. Has he sat in front of you guys and ate strawberries and whipped cream yet? Okay. No. Miss Ann, are you ready? Always, we gotta move on. Okay. Okay. We address our Father in Heaven. What does this mean? We. God invites us. Two. Okay, I feel like I'm starting wrong every time. I don't know. I keep messing myself up in my head. God invites us to. So with these words, God invites us to tenderly. God invites us tenderly to believe that He is our Father, and that we believe that it's, and we are His children. So that. So that we can believe. Pray. In Him. Pray to Him. Pray to him as com as boldly and confidently as dear children ask to do to their father. Yeah. Good. I will give you passable credit for that. If you want to redo it, it's up to you, but that's All just right. fine. That's okay. Moving on in life. I don't last time. <laughs> Great. Okay. Let us today begin by um, just checking through. You were supposed to finish up the questions for lesson six. Okay, You were supposed to do the lesson six questions on your own. So if you can grab out your books here, let's discuss a few of these questions and make sure that you've got these done. So lesson six in the green workbook, pages 20, 20, 20, excuse me, 21, 22, and 23. 21, 22, and 23. No, 21, 22, and 23. Oh, this <coughs> Go back. 21, 22, and 23. Excellent work. Hey, you, you can work a little bit on your handwriting. It might I have. It's only going to make right in these two pages. Good for you. So, and the one? I have horrible motor skills. Horrible motor skills. Well, you know what? You can always improve. You got a couple left to do, right? All right. So, Mr. Gray has some left to finish, but the rest of us got it done. Um, deer hunting. Let's actually come along. So, Grady, for example, on this one, your mom said you were done, but you're not. So I'm going to send it back to you that you need to... On the what? The quiz? No, the questions. Yeah, because I didn't have it any time. And that's, I get that. That's fine. But there's probably some confusion there or something. She thought you were done, but you're, you're not. So you need to get back on that. Uh, and then... Koi had him done. What numbers? And Ava, Ellen has him done. And I don't know if Mackenzie has him done or not because she's not here. 
Um, and well, guess what? When she's here, she can show me. You have to finish all of the questions oh, for okay. lesson six. You got to just do them all. All right. Um, lesson six questions. We talked through most of the questions last time. The one I wanted to follow up with you on and ask you about a couple of questions related to uh, the sacrifice of Isaac. So turn with me to pages 22 and 23. Let's start with question 10. Question 10 real quick. All right. So, Mr. Coy, how willing was Abraham to follow God's direction and actually kill Isaac? What do you think? How willing was he? Um, he had already got the knife and was about to kill his son. He was about to make a fish for chosen and what to So, you, you think that he was pretty willing? Yeah. Say, he was about to do it. About to do it. Okay. How do you suppose Abraham felt, Ella, when the angel of the Lord told him to stop? I think he felt relieved and faithful, like he knew. He just felt like. That's, I knew God was going to do it. Like, okay. Do you think you felt a little disappointed? No, no. I mean, probably happy. Probably happy. All right. Wait, um, you, Claire, you, what do you think? What, what did Abraham's willingness to kill his own son show about his trust in God? He would do anything for God. He, anything that God asked him. Okay. That he fully, he would do anything that God asked him. Uh, Grady, wait, you don't have that done, so I'm not going to put you on the spot. Man. Number 13. It's okay. We'll skip over and come back to you. We're going to move on to Koi. How does God use difficult things in our lives to test us and to build us up, Koi? Wait, what number is that? Number 13. 13, how does that? Um, to, show, to show us faith is... I, I think I put the most important thing or something like that. To show us faith is the most important thing. So that, does that answer the question, how, Koi? How does God show us? Sounds like you said, what does God show us? Right? Is that what you, did you write, what does God show us? Or did you answer, how does God show us? Okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay, take a moment, think about it for a second, right? We need to answer, how does God show us? Okay, should we let, let's let Miss Ella here. Ella, how does God use difficult things in our lives to test us and build us up? Okay, this might be a little bit like toys, but I said this is what we'll do for him, and they're just going to be with him. I don't really know. How does he use it? To see what we'll do for him? And then what else did you say? Yeah, to be for faith. See, like, righteousness. Show our righteousness. Show our righteousness. Okay. Koi, do you want to read your answer again? Oh, uh, number 13? Yep. To just, um, to just go through with it and put your faith in God. To go through it and put your faith in God. So think here with me, Koi, for a second, right? Imagine you've got something difficult to go through in your life. What's something difficult you might have to go through? Uh... I um not like if if your friend has moved away or something or Okay. There you go. Right? Your best friend moves away. Or just some good friends move away. Something difficult. How would God use that? How does God use that? Do you think God can use that even a difficult thing? Yeah. Okay. So you said, what was your answer again that you said? Um, to just, oh wait, the, like that, what I wrote down or? Yeah, what you wrote down. To just go through with it and put your faith, faith in God. Okay. So when you're, when your friend walks away, you just your friend moves away, you know, they come up to Otsego because Otsego is awesome and Sturgis is terrible and everybody wants to live in Otsego. Right? 
No, mm -hmm. just kidding. But your friend moves away and you're sad. You want me to tell you, Koi, just stick it out and put your faith in God. Is that what I should tell you? Mm -hmm. I don't, is, is that, if that's what you want me to tell you, that's what I'll tell you. If that's what you think that God wants me to tell you. How could God be at work in that difficult time? I think is the question. How can God use that time? Um, to show us that even though times are tough, you you should just you should still just like you shouldn't give up like. You could like pray or something. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we can, how does God use us? One of the things we could do is he listens to us still, right? How does God use these difficult things to build us up? Well, he still listens to us, right? He listens and pays attention to us. Um, I'm, I'm doing a terrible job asking you questions and helping you figure this out. So I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not really uh, doing a very good job here to help you out. I will try to do a better job of that. So let's let's take a, a step back and think about this and say, okay, your friends have all left. What are some things that you're probably going to be thinking or maybe even feeling? When your friends leave, what are you going to think? Um, that you have no one to hang out with and you'll probably be sad and probably you won't want to like go to school or do anything. Okay. Because you don't have your friends. So you're going to feel pretty sad. You're going to be feel pretty <coughs> alone. You don't feel like doing anything. Now, those are all normal things that people feel. Those are all normal parts of life. I get feeling that sometimes too. Just because you feel sad, does that mean you shouldn't do anything? No. No. Okay. So what does God tell you? even when you and I feel sad about something in life to help us keep going. Just, um... Do you, do you have a purpose in life, Coy, whether or not you have friends? Yeah. Yeah. What's some of your purpose in life? What does the Bible tell you your some of your role and your purpose in life is? Worship God. To worship God. What else? Um, to love God. To love other people. What else? To um, like build up the like people that go to church and. Yeah, right. To build up the people that are around you, the people who go to church and the people who don't go to church, right? To serve the world. So you have you have a high responsibility. And when your friends go away, when your friends go away, does your responsibility or your calling in life, what you're supposed to do with your life, your your purpose, does that go away? No. Okay. So how can God use your friends leaving to build you up? Well, maybe because your friends leave, you think, what am I doing with my life? What am I, what am I doing here? Am I only just living to hang out with my friends? And maybe God then says, I have a, you, brings you to a better sense of your purpose. So how God could use something difficult like losing your friends is he helps you think through what you're doing with your life. He helps you realize what your purpose in your life is. That might be one thing that God can help us do. So it's it's more than just what God does, right, with these things. He helps us think about who we are and what we're doing with our life as we learn lose the other stuff. This is a really hard question and I did a really bad job helping you with this. So I'm I'm sorry. Because it's really hard to see how God uses difficult things in our lives. Right? It works differently for everybody. So I I apologize. <laughs> I did a bad job on that. But this is a really helpful question to think about because everybody goes through something hard in our lives 
right? What's something hard that you're going through in life, Claire, or you have gone through kind of recently? Probably just change. Like, yeah. Change? Good. How about you, Grady? What's something hard you've had to go through or difficult that you've had to go through in life? Middle school. Middle school was really hard? Starting. Just starting middle school is hard. I hear you. How about you, Koi? What's something hard? Have you had friends leave? Mm, like in kindergarten I did, but I I don't have friends with them for like a few weeks. So. Okay. But... In July, my um, great aunt passed away, and that was pretty hard. That would be that would be tough. How about you, Miss Ella? Something difficult in your life? Yeah, I guess like friends leaving and stuff like that. Friends leaving, that would be hard. See, we've all got difficult things, and God uses those difficult things for our good. They all help us see less of ourselves and more of God in our lives. All right, let's try to wrap up our lesson here by going to the key questions. Let's jump ahead to the key questions. Can you guys turn to the key questions with me? Um, Abraham waited a long time for God to send the son he promised. And what does that teach us when we consider the promises that God has made to us? Grady, did you get the key questions done? Can you probably read it out? Page 23. All right, you want to answer it real quick for us? So Abraham waited, this is the first one, a long time for God to send the son that he promised. And what does that teach us when we think about the promises that God has made to us? They'll come soon. Okay. They'll happen at some point. They'll happen at some point. Good. What else did you put down, Mr. Coy? For the first for question, question A. Eight. Yep. I'm going to put that they will come true, but not always, but not always like suddenly. Like it'll ah, take some time. Good. That's the key thing. So, Grady, that's why I wanted to let somebody else help, also help, right? Because the point of the, the story with Abraham and God keeping his promise with Abraham is that God did keep the promise, but not when Abraham wanted it, right? God kept the promise when God wanted to keep the promise. And what are some promises that you and I are waiting for God to fulfill? Him to come. What's that? Him to come back to earth. Yeah, for sure. Big one, right? It's for when God to return again. What else are we waiting for God to fulfill? Go ahead, go ahead. Just, um, judgment day. Like good, that would be part of his return. Yeah, yeah for sure. Absolutely. Our futures, maybe? Good. Futures. So one of the hardest things, right? So many people spend like most of their lives saying, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I have no idea what my purpose in my life is. I have no idea what I should be doing with my life. And some people figure it out when they're like two years old. They're like, I'm going to be a pastor. Or I want to be a school bus driver. I'm going to be a teacher. And they're like, yes, this is the most important thing for me in the whole world. And I can't wait. Right. But some of us wait until we're like 90 years old. I finally figured it out. I'm supposed to be a genius. But you never know. And it doesn't matter because either way, God has promised that he says, I have plans for you. I have a purpose for you. I have a calling for you. And whatever that is, as long as we have to wait, it'll be okay. God will fulfill it in his time. Do you think you can wait 90 years, Grady, to figure out what you're supposed to do with your life? In 90 years, you'd be like 100 years old. Yeah, you'd be like almost dead. Do you think you can wait that long? No, he is dead. If not, yeah. We might have to wait a long time for God to keep his promises, huh? And it's important for us to be patient as we wait. All right, number B. Koi, in what ways does God, does the almost sacrifice of Isaac paint a picture of what Jesus would do? Oh, die but come back to life. Yeah, good. And what else did we learn about the almost sacrifice of Isaac? How does that point to Jesus himself? Um, it paints a picture because, like, they were sacrificed in a similar way, I guess, because they, yeah. they carried his own blood, Jesus carried his own cross. Like, that's it, right? And it was commanded by God. The key word of sacrifice. What's the word sacrifice mean, you guys? To kill something, like, either in place of something else or, like, out of, like, I guess, like, not religious reasons, but, like, sacrificing something else for, like, <laughs> another word. Like, <laughs> uh, <coughs> like, 
You were you were good with your first yeah. definition. You really had to cover. So to sacrifice means to offer somebody in the place of something else. To offer someone or something in the place of something else. Right now, you can you can tweak that definitely, but I would write that down on the bottom of your page there. That's a key word to learn from this lesson: to offer someone or something in the place of somebody else. All right, and then we're gonna take a break, uh, and you can just go stretch your legs a little bit, go to the bathroom, and we're gonna wrap this lesson up. Okay. Yeah. I gotta get my power cord anyway. What's up? Did you notice it's finally warming up in here? I did. Did you notice uh, it? Uh, I only have 20 more minutes of class. Wait, I'm gonna say seven. Oh, yeah, 28 more minutes of class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means we're not gonna have to do any of these questions. Probably not. And we'll have to come think of it earlier. Yo. Yeah. Cool. I need to really stop. Obviously. Yeah, oh, boy. Oh, stop. You think if I drop this off the tallest building in the world? You would probably kill someone. And if I drop it, I'd be Dude, wait, can I? Is it, is it one of them? No, it's not. Oh, oh, oh. I need to stop yeah. having things. I know. I remember when we used to be able to go outside when it was a light out? Oh, we should go outside. I guess going to the city before instead of like. Men. Give you guys break time and stretch your legs and just don't even get out of your chair. So. I got out of my chair. We stood up. You stood up. Put I up see that. I like that. You want to do some aerobics? Give you jumping jacks? Let's go to the pool and swim up. I would love that. Why couldn't you sit swimming today? I get to swim. I love swimming. I'm not really good at it. But... I did not get to swim today. All right. We should also use 500 yards. Wait, so yeah. are, are your daughters in catechism? Yeah. The one? Three, two of them are. Oh, yeah. The one Not the one that comes here, though. She's an old lady already. So are you going to be the one that confirms us? We'll see. Unless we have a pastor by then. Depends on how long we have to wait. I doubt. The last time we were without a pastor for four years. No. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Not four years. I'll get in two. Because when the guy left. It was a long time. Oh, oh, my dad was the president. And he was like, oh. I know it was at gonna... least two years. Actually, I think we were with that for like two years. And then he continued to be president for like the next two. Because... Very traumatic period of life. Huh? I know. We didn't yeah, have a past. I barely remember. I barely yeah, remember. We do not. And those markers are the location so of this not. room. I barely remember anything. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I wanted to write something on the board here for you so we had some time to learn. But this story is teaching us a biblical truth and a biblical idea called redemption. Redemption, okay? The heart of redemption is sacrifice. And so today, yeah, today as we wrap up, you need to learn this idea of redemption. This is what the second article of the Apostles' Creed looked like. If you want, I would just jot this down right here, or you can write it down under the bottom of the page. But either case, we're not just the book today. Well, we're, we're wrapping up the end of the book. This okay. is the end of this lesson. Okay? Oh, okay. This is the end of the lesson. Real okay, quick. Yeah. I want to make sure you understand that what this story is trying to teach you, and it's the truth of redemption. Okay. So, I want us to, we're going to enact this for a second. We're going to play this out here. With the Oreos? Yeah. Who yeah. doesn't like Oreos? I have, have stolen the Oreos. Koi, how much would you pay me to get your Oreos back? I don't really care. Nothing. Ooh, they're not worth play enough to play you. Play no, no, this is great. This is even better. He won't give me anything for it. Well, this is good. I just look to keep them. Keep them. My mom bought them, not me. All right. That's awesome. It's good for me. That's good for me. Okay? Now, is there something, Mr. Grady, though, if I stole it from you, you would pay me for it? A lot of things, yeah. All right. I'm going to take your catechism book. And you say, I don't really care about my catechism book. I kind of need that one. 
but I think you kind of need that one. So how much are you going to give me so I can you can have your catechism book back? Chomping out of curiosity. Oh my goodness. Come on, Grady. What are you going to give me? Like money? Or like I don't care. Whatever. What, do you, what is it worth to you? What are you going to give me for? God's to get word. It? You're going to give me God's word? I already have my own Bible. Thank you. You got to give me something that only you can give me. Or at least that I don't have already. So I just take your calyx. Should I just be able to ask him? him? We, we can just do a trade. If oh. I take the calyx, then I can have my book and we can trade. We could trade, except that they're my carrots. But that's my book. It is your book. We're just playing around now. Is there something you would give me to get your book back? Uh, yeah. What? You can give me your pen. I'll take your oh, pen. That's a fair trade. Fair trade. All right. It's, a, it's the church's oh, pen. Oh, it's, it's the, the church's, church's pen. pen. It's okay. Grady has paid a pen to buy back his catechism book, right? And in that same way, then the idea of redemption is what does it mean to redeem something? It means that you buy something back, okay? If you have to have started with a thing. You have to have started with something, and you pay something to get it back. All right, so I'll write that down for, for the, at the end of this lesson. I know we don't have any whiteboard markers because all these markers stink. There might be some. Oh, I, think there there's some I think there is some I think there is because I know he has a little one. Oh, yeah. Probably. Does he? Do you I run in there and grab one I for me, the, please? Yeah. I don't know if any of them works. I know one works. You know one works? Yeah. yeah. Grab the green one, I think. He chopped them out of them. They're not working anymore. Yeah, this is like pointless. Oh, I know what I trade you for my Oreos. Back when your dad was here, this half book or laser. When the markers were down, they would during class they would set the markers upside down. The next time they came into class, they would take the markers and write on your dad's window. Evan told me that. That's fun. Do you hunt? Excuse me. Do you hunt? I do when I have the time. Are you gonna hunt this season? I hope to. I'd like to. Are you from Wisconsin? Actually. So do you call a water fountain a bubbler? No. Why is every pastor from Wisconsin? And Wisconsin is a big Lutheran state. Because we're good people. Wells. Yeah, Wisconsin Evangelical Wisconsin. No, Wisconsin Dells. Wisconsin Wells. Or, like, have you ever heard of Wisconsin? Walk? No walk? Um, yeah, Did you check the bubble? I can go check the bubble. I can go check the bubble. I can go check the bubble. It's okay. Why don't we just move on? So, write this down, right? Normally we'll have a pen marker or something like that. Redemption. What is redemption? Redemption is to buy something back. Buy something To buy something back. And it's a key biblical idea. It's a key biblical idea. Just like, just like you and I... Mr. Coy and I, I have stolen your Oreos, oh, and Coy has to buy them back. The Bible pictures that you and I have been stolen from God, and he wants to get us back. And so he died it's, on the cross by buying us back. And so, exactly. The Bible's picture is not that, that you are independent and free. Thank you, Coy. I love your very thoughtful look, right? And you get to do what you want in life. The Bible is that you belong to God. And God wants to buy you back. And you can tell that this is an important thing for us. Because it's the heart of many of our stories. Anybody know what story this is? Hunger Games. Yeah, this is Hunger Games. Tell me what, what this scene is. Um, that's uh, Katniss. It doesn't matter what when, her name is, okay. right? When the, her younger sister got pulled on the trial. Yeah, so there's this, this story. It's called Hunger Games. But the story goes that there is there is a, a city, and the city goes out into the outlying districts, like coming to Sturgis, and they take two kids from the city, and they force them to play in a violent death match. And they come to this city, and they pick this woman's sister to play in the games. And she doesn't want her sister to die. And so what does she do? She offers herself in the place of her sister. 
she sacrifices herself. That we all recognize. But what I wanted to also point out then is by sacrificing herself, she actually buys her sister back, doesn't she? She gets her sister back because the city has a claim on her and she gets to buy her sister back. So this is a, a key theme in a sto our stories. Or maybe you've seen this movie before. Do you know this movie? No. If you haven't seen it yet, you should go and see it. This is the, the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, this is the story, the first one. The four book? children. Yeah, yeah it is. But it's was also, that was it's actually, yeah. actually It's actually a movie now, too. And in this scene, there's this the great highlight of the movie. Uh, the, the great high king, Aslan, uh, he is a lion, and he has offered himself in the place of somebody who was a traitor to his side. So there was somebody on his side who went over to the evil queen's side, called the White Witch. And in order to get this, his traitor back, he offered himself as a sacrifice. Uh, and in so doing, he bought back the traitor from the enemy side. You may probably don't know this story, ladies Rob. It's one of the most famous stories, but it's by a man named Victor Hugo. It's got the the idea of redemption built into it. You probably have heard of this movie before, and maybe you know this story. You guys know who this is? Yeah. You recognize that face? Yeah. Let's see if, if this will play for me or not. I don't know how decent the Wi-Fi is out here. Oh, it will play. Oh. You guys know who this is? Iron Man. Yeah, it's Iron Man. Now, but you know... Maybe you've never realized this, right? Iron Man is the hero of all of these great action scenes. But what does he actually have to do in the end? Do you know how the story ends? No, I'm not going to play it all for us here because I want to sit here forever. Like the end of the whole series and stuff? Doesn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah end game. What does he, end, what does he, he have to do at the end of the game? He yeah. dies, right? How does he die? Damn, sad. Yeah. He sacrifices himself. He does, doesn't he, right? So that the whole scene, now the, the thing is, is that by sacrificing himself, he brings back everybody else, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. right? Does he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the world does actually back. do anything though? Yeah, everybody else comes back when he dies. Yeah. Um, but he offers himself up, he sacrifices himself so that he can win everybody else back. And you probably don't know these other stories. These are famous historical stories. Maybe someday you'll read. Crime and Punishment is a great story of redemption. You maybe have seen or watched this story. Before. Harry Potter. This is Harry Potter, right? What's the what's the punchline of Harry Potter? What happens in Harry Potter? Uh, his parents get killed by an evil man. Yeah, but you do you know the end of the story? What does Harry have to do so that... Do you, have you seen the end of the story? Yeah, I already know it. You already know it, right? What does Harry have to do so that everybody else can live? He has to sacrifice himself, doesn't he? He has to let Voldemort kill himself so that everybody else can survive. What I'm trying to say to you is to tell you and point out to you, right? We know what the Bible knows just from culture and life. We've baked the idea of redemption, redemption to buy something back into the very heart of our culture. It is the most important thing for all of our lives. Unless we get bought back from sin and devil, the devil, we will all die. And we've made sure that everybody has a chance to see this idea. If you have a chance to sit, hang around with your friends, right, and you're talking with them, they will know these stories. And they may not know what's going on. And they may not have actually thought about that. But then you can say to them, you know, there is somebody who actually did that for us. Harry Potter is just a story. Mm -hmm. Jesus actually died for us, right? Hunger Games is just a story. Jesus actually died for you and for me. So that you and I can be saved. It's pretty awesome that he did that. Now, that's the truth of redemption. And that's what we wanted to make sure we learn in lesson six today. So we can wrap up today's lesson, I think. I don't know if there's anything else we have to cover here. Is there anything else we need to cover? Oh, we are starting a new lesson. We, we probably will start a new lesson. We have a little bit of time and I don't want to be wasting your time. I think that's good for lesson six. Right. We need to re learn. We will have a short quiz. Yes, I will on send it six or seven? on six. I will. I will sign it online Wait, for didn't it. Didn't we already have a good lesson six? No, that no. was a good, good. 
That was a, a, a quiz. Oh, no, 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 that was five. That was five. Yes, that was a that quiz was... on lesson five. So for, for next time, for homework, what you need to have done, and you already know this because you saw this, but I will sign this at home. You're going to have a, a quiz on lesson six, and you need to know the second article of the Okay. Um, question. And then oh, really? for you, you need to catch up on the rest of the questions of lesson I, I six. Oh, this is you got them all done. Oh, wait, but that's a new quiz, right? That will be the next quiz, yep. Wait, the whole apostles, the whole? That's... Didn't we already finish lesson six questions? Huh? Yeah, the, the first part, remember the first two things? Those were last week's homework. The second two things are this week's homework. It's going, it's going to take a little more. It's really long. It is. Take your best shot at it. Okay. Really Lesson six, the Apostles' Creed. Second of the Apostles' Creed. Did I have to say it again? If you said it, you're done. Oh. I don't think you said it. I said it's dad. You said you're dead, then you're done. I already said to my dad, I want to There you go. You'll see that once you get through this one, then the next one is easier. So this is probably one of the hardest memory works that we have to do. Apostles. The second article of the Apostles. You will never know the pain of having to memorize this. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Koi. Happy birthday to you. Touch of coffee. Twelve. R. Is we gonna do the R? You R. You two. R. You three. How many times do they do that thing? To what? They don't count for adults we anymore. Don't, yeah, we don't count. But some adults turn like 81 and... I'm not counting to 81. You're not counting to 81? I'm All not right. 81, I'm 12. You're 12. Well, we're 12. calling it quits there. Thank you.